Welcome back to Julie's Wreath Boutique. Today, do you feel the luck of the Irish? I do. And we're gonna make a leprechaun wreath. This is originally designed by Sarah Dean of Crafts in a Nutshell. Make sure to let her know how much we appreciate her sharing her idea and go over to her Facebook page, like and follow and see all the beautiful creations that she makes. So let's get started. Okay, so let's make a leprechaun. You know what? Out of all of my years of making wreaths and crafts, I've never made a St. Patrick's Day wreath. I know, I'm just, I don't really get into all these little holidays. I kind of cover the major ones like Easter and Christmas, and I do a little bit of Valentine's and 4th of July and Thanksgiving, but I don't really get into maybe the smaller ones. And I should because I'm Irish. My dad, my maiden name is Casey, so there's some Irish there, and um, so I should. But um, I got this idea from one of my followers and one of my fellow crafters, and her name is Sarah Dean, and Sarah has a Facebook page called Crafts in a Nutshell, and all of her links um, to Facebook, and if she does have an Etsy shop, I'll link that too, but I'm not sure that she does, but you can always contact her through that Facebook page because I know that she could probably make you one if you're looking to buy one, okay? So number one, thank you, Sarah, for sharing this idea. You know, everybody is is their own creator and of crafts and stuff, and they don't always have to share their talent, and I really appreciate Sarah for sharing her idea here because it is a doozy. This is like the first one I've seen in a long time that I was like, oh, I want to make that. So we're going to make a little leprechaun and it is adorable. And again, thank you, Sarah. And thanks, Sarah, in the comments and go follow her Facebook page. Link is in the description box. So what are we going to use? We're going to use a 10 inch wreath form. We're going to use some plastic canvas. Um, this isn't even a full roll of orange poly burlap. You can get orange poly burlap from the reshop from Mel's Crafty Mojo and from Trendy Tree, all of which links are in the description box below. And they have these new 10 inch wreath forms as well. Um, the things that you might not be able to get there, you can go to your local craft store. I went to my Hobby Lobby. I got some little buttons. Um, if you check out Sarah's page in her original design, and I know I, I should have it in the, in the front here of this video, she had a smaller like, um, wood piece for the nose which was I think far cuter but I was like I was running out of time at the craft store last night because we got snow coming so <laughs> I, I wanted to get this before I got snowed in so I got a little bit of fabric just green fabric any kind of fabric will do um, then we're going to use some of these um, popsicle sticks and then I got some gold one and a half inch ribbon and um, black one and a half inch ribbon um, some of these little zip ties and this is a part of a foam board from Dollar Tree. Um, it's a remnant of a piece so this was enough for me and then I got some felt that we're going to put on the back of this to kind of finish it all up. So let's get started on to the next step. Okay so let's get started with the hat. Now she used seven of these popsicle sticks that she glued on the back of the hat to kind of give it more structure. And it's a good way to kind of also kind of measure your hat the way that you want it too as well. Um, so I'm just going to do this. This is my probably, oh, since this is a straight edge, I'm going to just keep it with that. But I'm going to kind of put seven of these down here. And, and I'm not going to do it all the way here. We're just using this as a template so we know where to run the straight edge over with. Okay, so I'm just gonna lay that all here. Okay, so that's about, that's about right. And then I'm just gonna do a little dot because this is how tall we're gonna make our hat. And it doesn't have to be exact, but I'm just kind of working with what I got here, okay? And then I'm gonna just do this. We're gonna kind of, measure it up here and then I'm going to use that same popsicle stick as kind of like a measuring tool and I'm going to run it across there and I'm just going to run it all the way across let's just for good measure so I'm going to cut that part out and then we're going to cut it to here but we're going to leave a um oh brim for our thing so I'm just going to take a straight edge and all these tools that I'm going to show you today 
um, I have in my Amazon storefront. And the link for that is in the description box below down to this the cutting mat that I use all the time to my glue guns, to everything. So we're gonna do that because that is about right. Yep. So let's do here. So what you wanna do is you wanna make a hat. So now let's put the, the seven things here. One, two, three. And these are like almost eight inches. These are really big pops popsicle sticks. And I almost couldn't find them and I was getting frustrated with myself. Like, where are the popsicle sticks, Julie? <laughs> I know you have them, all right? All right, so this is what I'm gonna do. So we're going to come down, let's see here. Basically, you just wanna create a brim, okay? So I want that brim to be about one inch. So I'm gonna go like this. Again, this is not going to be perfect at all but I'm just gonna do the best I can here. And watch your fingers. I only have a little bit of this board left, unfortunately. Okay, and then I'm going to just kinda of do this. All right, do the other side as well. So let's turn that over. Let's get our little So that's how it's gonna look. But I think I wanna I wanna trim off just a little bit more. Let's trim off maybe mm, a half an inch maybe or a quarter of an inch. And trim half an inch this way. Oops, I'm not very straight there. Okay. So at this point, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna glue these onto the back. Alright. But actually I don't think that's what she did. <laughs> What we're gonna do is make sure we have enough here. Makes it all the right size, okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue these onto the back so that just gives it a little bit more structure. And then I'm gonna glue the fabric over top of that because I'm going to cut a piece of felt here. If I have enough, I wanna cover a back for this um, wreath. And then that way we'll have a back with the orange as well. So just take your glue gun and just run it down here. And this is just gonna create more structure to the hat. Okay, so I ordered about, I wanna say three eighths of a yard. You could probably have gotten away with a quarter of a yard of fabric. It really just, just depends how big you want your hat. If you're doing a smaller wreath, then you could get away with a lot less. So basically you just wanna have a little bit of enough of the over edge so that you have enough to to um, glue the fabric onto, I'm just gonna cut it off like that, to your hat. So basically just enough. I'll probably take another piece of, um, I'll probably cut more off, but I just wanna kinda get it started here. Okay, so we are back and um, I'm gonna put my stuff away there. So I've got this, this is the back of your, your hat. Okay, the, the wood is the back. Got my nice pair of sharp scissors. I will need those in a moment. But you're just gonna start by taking some glue. And I know that Sarah did it. She she glued it onto the foam and then added the popsicle sticks. So I really think you could do it either way. It's really kind of up to you. Um, so I'm gonna do that. And then I'm gonna do the other side so that I can make sure that we don't have any wrinkles showing because it was a little yeah, the wrinkles will go away. It was a little, um, oh, what you call it? It was a little um, wrinkled, and there went my elephants. As you can hear them. It's cold here in Michigan, and we're getting ready to have a nice snowstorm and get about eight inches of snow. Um, I know a friend of mine down near Kansas City, she's already snowed in, and I said, well, you're sending it this way. <laughs> So anyways, but we just got back from vacation from Florida, so I can't complain too much, right? Okay, so then I'm going to take it and I'm going to kind of cut out a little corner here because I don't want it to kind of buckle up a little bit. And I also am going to kind of cut a little bit of, can you see that? I've cut an angle there. 
All right, so let's do this side. Put some more glue. Be careful with the glue gun. This is a hot glue gun that um, has really hot glue. I love it. It's in my Amazon store. I don't know that they have it in stock, but it's the Sure Bonder and it's the cordless and it's my favorite glue gun by far. And I've used quite a bit of them. I have some glue there that I didn't need. Okay, that's all right. So again, let's just cut that. So what I'll do is I'll use this as a template to cut out my fabric, okay? So you're gonna do this. Now I'm gonna just glue all of this together like so. And then I'm gonna cut out some parts here. I'll show you really quick. And then that way you don't have to watch me do everything. <laughs> I know it gets a little tedious at times. I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna cut here. I think I'm gonna cut here. And I'm gonna do this. Again, it's not about perfection. It's just about getting it done. And that's what I'm focused on here. I'm gonna just try to get this done. I'm gonna lay that over there. And again, I got too much glue over there, but that's where I'm gonna use the felt to cover the back of it. And then I'm just gonna cover this like so. Add a little bit more glue. Again, it's just about getting this to look good on the front side, right? And my corners aren't gonna be quite as perfect, but that's okay. I'm getting glue all over myself right now. All right, that's what the handles are made for, right? So do it on the other side and then come back. So you're just gonna take a piece, and I probably had quite a bit of this somewhere, but I just thought, oh, I'll just go ahead and get it. It was on sale, so I'm gonna just kinda I'm actually gonna put the glue on the back because I don't want the glue seeping through the ribbon. You know, I'm so organized and got it together, let me tell you. <laughs> That's me being um, silly. All right, I'm gonna pull it on this side and do it. And then we're gonna add a little bit of gold to it as well. And then I'm just gonna take a little bit of this ribbon, I'm just, it does have a little bit of wire. You could use anything that you have, um, be creative. Maybe you have some gold ribbon laying around, just use that. I just wasn't sure, I know I have some, let me tell you, holy cow, my, my basement is like a miniature craft store and we desperately need to get rid of some craft supplies. I have way too much. Too many things that I'll never be able to use all of it. So I'm just gonna look at that. I think that looks pretty good. I think this needs to be trimmed ever so much. Okay. Now I'm gonna be really, really careful with this part because I don't want the glue to come through. So just a little bit of glue, not a lot. And I'm gonna put it in, I'm gonna do the best I can without burning myself here. Let's see here. And then you've got your little hat. Isn't that cute? So let's put this to the side and let's work on our beard. All right, so the next part of our um, little leprechaun wreath is the petals that is gonna make the beard. So I don't have a full roll here. Um, I did have a lot of orange left over and I thought, I think this'll work. So let me show you two different ways you can do this. Number one, you can cut a 10 inch um, piece with your wood burner. Um, right now I have a glass cutting board underneath um, my mesh here and over top of my cutter, uh, rotary cutter board or whatever it's called. And then I'm using a wood burner. Now I teach you guys that I like to use a wood burner because it melts the edges and helps with the fraying, all right? So basically you're just gonna cut 10 inches here and you're gonna wanna wear a mask because this does put off fumes and I don't want you to kind of smell those fumes. So that will cut your mesh, okay? It doesn't work on every single mesh, but for the poly burlap, it definitely should work. So that's one way you could cut it. You can cut it one more other way. You could cut it at 11 inches, okay? So I'm gonna cut it at 11 inches here. And then you can take it and you can Put it over top. Let's see here. Let me make sure I get it the right way. I'm trying to think here. Yeah. 
So you put the finished side down and the finished side at the top and then you put it over the top here and you make a triangle. Now, you see here that we have some overage. If you want to double fuse this petal together to kind of reduce even more fraying, you can do that. And then you would just simply go over top of it again with your wood burner. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and cut these at 10 inches each and make my um, wreath that way. But that's just another option if you wanna have um, more sealed edges, if that's what you wanna do, okay? But I'm gonna cut these at 10 inches each. I'm gonna cut about 15 of them, 15 to 16, and then we're gonna start on the next step. Okay, so the next step is we're gonna take a 10 inch wreath frame. Could you do this on an eight inch wreath frame? Yes. Could you do it on a 12 inch or even a Dollar Tree wreath frame? Absolutely. The difference is that if you make it smaller, you're gonna need more petals for the beard. If you make it larger, you're gonna need, okay, if you make it smaller, you're gonna need less petals, larger, more petals. Get the drift there. <laughs> and the same with the dimensions of the hat. You would just make it a little bit smaller or a little bit bigger, either way, okay? So we're gonna take this. I'm gonna actually cut a piece that um, will fit on this second rim for my wreath frame that I'm using. Um, mine was, like I think, a little different than what Sarah did. So I'm just going to take and make a circle here and then I'm gonna cut it out and I'm just simply going to lay it on top here and connect it with zip ties. And then we'll come back and start putting the petals on. Okay, so I have my wreath frame ready to go. All right, so I'm going to place my wreath frame here. This particular frame has five sections. The sections don't really matter. Um, Sarah's had four, this one has five. Again, if you wanna get these 10 inch wreath forms, make sure to check out the wreath shop and Mel's Crafty Mojo and Trendy Tree. Um, links are in the description box below. I'm gonna put those underneath, okay. First thing is we're gonna start at the base of our wreath because we're gonna make that one first petal, okay? We're gonna do the Dean Michael Designs Daisy Petal. And basically all you're gonna do is you're gonna take and make a triangle, okay? So I'm gonna make a triangle. We're gonna do, let's just for this um, whole purpose, and I'm kind of flattening out that mesh. That's what I do if it gets a little too curly. I'm just going to do finish sides on the bottom and finish sides on the the top. So actually, no, that's wrong. Finish sides on the right and the, the left, or you can do it the other way. It doesn't matter. But the whole point is just keep doing it the same way as you do this. So I saw somebody the other day, Mel of Mel's Crafty Mojo, she did this. And I thought that makes a lot of sense. She just kind of picked it up in the middle here, which I thought was great. And then just kind of um, brought it all in like this, and I thought that was really good. I felt, I felt like that made a better petal. So I'm gonna try Mel's um, technique of doing that. So basically we're gonna put the first one on the second wire here. So I'm gonna grab my, oh, what did I do with my um, zip ties? I have a little Dollar Tree container of my zip ties. These are the zip ties I love, and they're just really a good size. Okay, so I'm gonna just put it right here at the bottom. This is like the start of our beard. All right. Now, if for some reason you feel like this one's going a little wonky, what I will do sometimes, um, if I feel like it, but I just kind of straightened it out and just seemed to straighten itself out. Um, let's cut these. Let's just kind of look at that. I might take another one. Let's see here. Uh, I think it's going I think it's going a little bit in the direction I don't want it to go so I'm going to take one and I'm going to straighten the beard out here I'm going to take one and crisscross it and when I do this it's going to straighten it out okay see it just straightens it out so easily so when you're making a petal wreath if it's for some reason it wants to go one way just take another zip tie you can take a smaller one if you want as well all right so the next thing is we're going to put two right up here we're going to mimic each side so the key here is when you put one on this side make sure it there's another one on the other side so that we can mir mirror them so again make your petal here and i'm going to do how mel did she just kind of brought this up and i just thought that makes a lot of sense so i'm going to do that and see how that works okay i probably should put my zip tie in here but that's okay 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of put it where for, for this purpose, because I have the brackets, um, I'm just going to use this right here, okay? But if you don't have those brackets, that's okay. Just as long as you, um, the same on both sides, okay? So that one doesn't need an extra thing. So let's do this. Let's put another one over on this side. Just make sure that when you put that other side on that it's the same. So we just wanna make sure it looks the same. All right, so there you go. So now what are we gonna do? Let's see here. Now we're gonna go up about we're gonna go about up about here and we're gonna put two more right here. So, so we're kind of building the outline and then we'll fill in if we need to put one in between as well. So let's put one here and one here and then I'll be right back. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I have two. I went back and looked at Sarah's pictures and she did hers a little bit closer together. She did, she did these a little bit down here. So again, I'm not gonna do it exactly like she does, but I'm gonna do my very best. So I'm going to kind of, I'm gonna put one right here in the middle of the canvas. I don't know, I don't ever feel like I get this petal. I don't do it the justice it deserves, <laughs> if that makes sense. I always feel like you guys do such a better job than I do, but um, we're all so critical of our own work. I don't know about you guys, but I'm very critical of my own work, and then I look at others and I'm like, oh, I wish mine looked like theirs. So, you know, we all do it. Okay, so we've got that. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up here we're gonna put one here, one here, and then we're gonna do three across here, okay? So you're gonna do the wires now. So you're gonna do one up here, and then we're gonna we're going to space them. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna let's start this one off. And we're just, you know, we're just kind of kind of like, I don't know, I'm just kind of eyeballing it, so to speak, if that's the right word for it. Um, that's what I'm doing. So I'm just gonna keep doing this. I don't know, I'm, I don't have the, the hang of doing it this way, but um, do it the way, if you like it the way that I've taught in the past, do that way and you will be just fine. All right, see my little arrows or my little points don't point in the right direction, but there we go. As you can see, that creates a nice um, kind of beard look, okay? you know how the beard has to go in. So let's do one on the other side like that. And like, I'm just staying on this side of the, the bracket there. Again, you don't have to use this, uh, um, this size wreath form. You could use smaller, you could use bigger, but um, yeah, it's really up to you and what you're trying to create. Again, I don't get my points the way I want them all the time. Okay. So we want to kind of fill in this spot. So let's work. Let's do one here. I'll do I'll do these two, and then I'll put one on the other side. Okay. Let's get the ones that have been sitting here flattening out a little bit. Sometimes you know how it curls too much. And let's do, and then let's do one in the middle. Okay. So here's the last layer of petals we're gonna do, and we're gonna kind of work up the top here because we gotta cover everything up. I have plenty of petals here. I've got, let's see, I've got five more petals and I might end up using four of them. So let's put one petal here. So I'm gonna put this one at kind of an angle for me. All right, let me see. Okay, I think that works. All right. So again, what do we do? If we do one side, we're gonna do the opposite side. So let me grab this piece here. And let's see, I just, this is kind of what I do is I kind of lay it like across the brackets and just see about where it should be. So I think that's about where it should be. This is such a cute idea. Thank you, Sarah, for sharing it with us. All right, and then I'm gonna take one and I'm just gonna kind of make the petal first and then decide um, where I want it to be. It's funny how we, we do things and we're like, okay, 
when we go to do them, it always turns out a little different. You know, no, nobody's flowers are exactly the same. It's just the creation of them. So I'm going to do one there. And I think I'm going to do one there. Okay. So we're going to just put it on the, um, this wire right here. So let's, let's just put one here and see if that works. If we need to add a third one, we'll add a third one. Okay, so we're down to where we're gonna put the hat on. As you can see, we used all those petals, and I'm gonna tell you how many petals we used for this particular wreath. So what I did was I kind of put this over top of where I wanted it, okay? So I look at the other side. So this is kind of where I want. I'm gonna have it down a little bit further, and honestly, I feel like we need to pull this one up a little bit and you kind of move this one up. Kind of just hide, because I want to hide that wreath frame, okay? So you're just going to do, going to eyeball it. So you could do this a couple ways. You could um, make this brim a little bit more here, a little bit wider, okay? I didn't do that, but I still think this is going to be super cute. So I'm going to just flip it over, okay? This is where we're going to have it. So what I want to do is I'm going to glue this zip tie I'm gonna put this zip tie right here. And that's about where, that's where I want the head, okay? I'm gonna do a close up on this, right? So I'm gonna lift this up and I'm gonna add glue right where this is. And then I'm gonna add a little piece of felt here. Now this is Gorilla Glue Sticks. This is really, really um, some strong stuff. So I have a little Oops, I'm trying to hold this down. I wasn't quite as prepared as I wanted to be here. I'm just going to put that on top of it, okay? And I know we've made a felt piece to go over top of this, but I think because this is all going to be hidden, I'm going to just cut a piece this way and um, only have half of that covered, okay? So just work with me on this, okay? So we got that one, all right? So let's put this back, but I think that's about, let's turn this over. But you're just going to kind of guess at it. Let's see. Uh, that's about right. I'm going to look at it. All right. So I'm going to put it actually about here because I'm going to pull that down a little bit. And I'm going to put it down. You want that head to be down closer to, the, to that range there. And that looks about right. Oops. We're going to put some glue there. Cut another piece here of the felt and just put that over top. Okay, so I glued it on, got little hairs on there, <laughs> but ignore that. And then I'm gonna put this over here. I'm gonna make sure that's where I'm, I'm wanting it. I want it up a little bit higher, actually. And then I'm gonna find where the head here is and Let's see. You only get one shot at this is what I'm learning here. So that's not really where I want it to be. I want it to be a little bit. You're going to have to move the little petals out of your way, and that's okay. So you're just going to get one shot because this zip tie is already in. So I'm going to put the first one in, and I'm not going to um, do it too, you know, tight just look at that okay that's looking good because when the nice thing is that you can use move these that's what's nice about a wire wreath frame is you can slide these petals around if you need to and that's why I like this um so now I just gotta find where is my other zip tie she's right over here I'm just gonna flip her in here there you go and put her on Okay, so let's look at that. Oh, that's so cute. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten that up. All right, we're gonna go ahead and tighten that up. And we can kind of, you can kind of move this around a little bit too. Now, I know you'll be able to see a little bit of the back there. And what you could do is take your, you know, you if you wanna cover all that, you can, okay? But I'm not gonna, I'm not too worried about it because you're gonna still see some of this, unfortunately. And that's, that's just how it works sometimes. It's okay. It's, it's okay. 
So we're going to cut these. And this is where I'm going to put the loop for you to hang your wreath, okay? And I'm going to put it right, I'm going to use a zip tie. All right. And then you've got something to hang your wreath for. So then I'm going to take a piece of felt that I had cut a long time ago. So it's going to be a little wrinkly. Oh, that's not quite big enough. I need to cut another piece of felt. Okay. Give me a moment. I'll cut another piece of felt. Basically, all you're going to do is you're going to take little scissors. Again, I have these scissors in my Amazon um, storefront. You're going to poke a hole and you're going to attack. Oh, excuse me. You're going to attach it. I had a hiccup with a zip tie okay that's how i cover the back of my wreath so we're going to cover the back just like that and then i'll be back and we're going to add one more touch so don't go away okay so this is the finishing touch i added um the right size of felt on the back we've got a little hook there if you want to cut a piece of felt you can cover that up it's totally okay um she used a little round um wooden bead and it looked much better than this, but this is all I could find. I was kind of in a hurry at the craft store and I thought, oh, I just gotta get something. And she just kind of glues it like right underneath the hat there. And I just thought that was so cute. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of glue. I probably should stand up here. So I wanna put it right underneath there. And we're just gonna hold it down. And if you wanted to, you could use a piece of wire and you could go through each and um, before you know, you put the backing on like I just did, but there you go. I think he's super cute. And let's see how, how long is he? He is about 22 inches long and about, let's see here, 16 inches wide. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, thank you so much, Sarah, for sharing this adorable little leprechaun with us. I really enjoyed making him. If you got this far in the video, number one, thank you for watching. Make sure you're subscribed and leave me some little, you know, leprechaun. I don't know what, what's in a clover leaf or something that has to do with St. Patrick's Day. Okay. So until we meet again, every Sunday night at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I will have a video up here on my YouTube channel. So check me out on social media, check the links out in my description box, and we will see you again here on Julie's Wreath Boutique. Bye-bye.